Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Lorcana cast. We are here with a special short form episode where we are going to be talking with a brand new guest, Cabled, who is joining us to talk a little bit about their experience in trading card games. We're going to talk about the new announcement of Star Wars Unlimited, as well as expectations and thoughts on Gen Con. So welcome to the show, Cabled. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Just got off work, did some dishes, fed the cats, and now I'm here. Awesome. So why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself so they can get to know you? Yeah. So I've been playing trading card games very off and on since around like 2010 ish. And it was very like at the start of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! I played a little bit and then jumped into Pokemon in 2013 and was very off and on trying to be competitive, would go to major tournaments and then it would drop off. But then this past year at the tail end of the pandemic, I started getting back into Pokemon trading card game very competitively. And I've been traveling a bit for that. Super cool. And you also have a Lorcana podcast, don't you? I do. It's the Enlightened Lumineers podcast. So what kind of show is that based around for people who are listening? You know, if, if you were trying to make an elevator pitch, like, hey, come listen to my show. What do you talk about? First of all, I always try to go over any news that has come out in the past few weeks. And then eventually when the game is actually out and there's more cards, I do want to talk about the meta. And if there's any kind of like tournament reports and I'll go over those. And then at the tail end of the episodes, I go over the Glimmer Gallery section, which I like to go over one card specific and go over the media that they're from, the movie, and some trivia tidbits as well. Ooh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Okay. All right. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is your your history and your experience with Pokemon. I know you are, were on social media talking about an event you just went to. So why don't you kind of recap what the event was, what you were playing, and uh, what the Pokemon meta looks like in the TCG realm. Yeah, so I just recently went to the EUIC or the Europe International Championship for Pokemon. Even before that, I was actually out there a week prior just having fun doing vacation. So to the lead up to it, I didn't have too much testing, but I was playing a deck that I am familiar with from previous formats, which was a Lost Zone box deck. But my tournament run itself just wasn't what I had idealed. I started a 2-1 record and then lunch happened and there's always that like curse with people. If you start good and then there's a lunch, you just start doing bad. I just kept facing either one bad opponent or one bad uh, matchup. And then after that, it was just round or game one of a round. I would just have unplayable hand and I had two rounds in a row that did that. And the Pokemon International tournaments are usually the big major ones where you can easily get double or triple the amount of points you would normally get for a top 128 placement. So what does the Pokemon meta look like in terms of deck archetypes and then cost to actually buy some of the you know top decks on the market right now? Because I know it is not very expensive compared to Yu-Gi-Oh! and right. Magic right now. Yeah, so Pokemon prices are easily the cheapest out of any very competitive game out there, although some people think Pokemon's not competitive. I would say the average price right now for a deck is like 70 bucks, and most of them are actually 50 And then some can go up to 100 and 120. If it's a brand new set, the meta deck at the time is usually can be up to 200 bucks. But then a month or two away, it can go down to like 150 or 120. And then Pokemon's very good about reintroducing new sets or different promos so that the prices go down even more. And then for meta, there isn't a traditional like aggro control or tempo for Pokemon. It's kind of like their own type of decks. It's hard to explain, and I'm not good at explaining it either, but there usually is like one main deck as of recently, and everyone just kind of builds around that. Either you're playing the best deck, which previously was 
Lugia V-Star, and everyone tried to beat that deck. So how much Lorcana gameplay have you been able to uh, get under your belt over the last couple of weeks? Because I know you're traveling and everyone's working and we all have lives, but have you had the ability to get some Lorcana testing in for yourself? I've played probably about two dozen games, maybe a little bit past that. I originally okay. played maybe like six games when the rules were first announced. And then when we got like the next round of cards, like the from Gala and Gamma, then I played a lot more because it actually felt like some decks were true decks and not like very piecemeal decks. Right. So based on that that play experience that you have currently, how do you feel about Lorcana since you've got quality knowledge and information about Pokemon and a lot of people are comparing Lorcana to Pokemon? You know, mm-hmm. do you think, yeah, it's the same kind of game? Do you think, no, it's pretty different? Or, you know, maybe this will kind of have the same crowd, similar people playing both games at the same time. Like, what are your thoughts between Pokemon and Lorcana? I definitely think it'll have the same type of crowds. Because Pokemon does have the younger crowd, but even at weeklies, it depends on your store and even your city or location that there can be kids or there cannot be kids. And I think that's going to be a very similar thing with Lorcana. Depends on how the store wants to organize their their play systems there. With the Disney Lorcana play style, I think it is similar enough to Pokemon where everything's pretty much one-sided and there's things that you can do on your turn to disrupt your opponent, but there's no actual interaction. And a lot of people think, like I said earlier, Pokemon's not competitive, but I think Pokemon with and Disney Larkana having no interaction one-sided, you have to actually think further ahead than the games that actually have interaction. Yeah, because you're usually playing in the now if you have, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh or Magic because you have the access to like the stack of the chain. So whatever people are doing, you have to think about that in conjunction with your overall strategy. But with Pokemon and Lorcana, you know, when you're when you're searching and tutoring out your Pokemon or you're dropping your supporter or, you know, evolving your Pokemon, you're constantly thinking about, you know, how can I get a KO right now? And how can I set up to get good trades in the future, you know, three to four turns as you're going back and forth so that you stay ahead in that prize race. Because Pokemon is a, is a race as well. It's race to six right. versus 20, but it's a different way to race somebody mm-hmm. to, a, you know, a victory goal. So, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's a really good assessment, and it'll be really interesting to see what Lorcana does with the different communities since a lot of people think it's supposed to kill magic and kill Pokemon, and it's right. not it's going to coexist alongside them. Right. I do think that the Disney Larkana team should take a lot of notes from how Pokemon does the organized system. Obviously I'm biased cause I'm in it, but it also, it favors the younger crowd as well. Cause they have the split divisions. Pokemon has three different age divisions. I think it's like, yeah, it's a junior seniors masters. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if they should do three cause that senior level can be like very, like only the top senior players just keep playing. And then it's it's a good jump for seniors to go into Masters, but new seniors trying to get into the game, it might be hard for them. Yeah, it's, it's a weird age gap because you're either really, really young for juniors, you're really, really mm-hmm. good in seniors, and then you, ev- there's everyone else in Masters. So yeah, I could see like maybe an age like, you know, 14 and younger and then 15 and higher. And that's it. Right. Because at that point, you're not necessarily an adult, but you are capable of playing with adults. You're not going to yeah. you know, feel uncomfortable playing against like a 15 or 16 year old as opposed to like an eight year old. That's like, nah, I'm not interested in that, man. With Pokemon doing locals, it is very fun to play with the kids. You just kind of have to go with the flow with them. Mm -hmm. And just have fun. Yeah, you're not super worried about winning or losing. You're just having a good game. Yes. So next thing I want to talk about is the announcement that actually came out today at the time of this recording on May 9th. And that is Star Wars Unlimited. So Fantasy Flight Games is going to be producing a new Star Wars trading card game called Star Wars Unlimited, and it is coming out in 2024. There's been no card reveals, little information. I am positive that this drop is going to accelerate into something at Gen Con. 100% confident we're going to see demo or cards, something at the FFG panel in, you know, a couple months. 
But we've already had people start speculating about, oh, well, you know, Disney is giving the Star Wars license to FFG. So that means that Robinsberger isn't going to have it. And then some people are saying that, you know, okay, you know, this new Star Wars TCG is going to eat up market space for Lorcana and so on and so forth. There's a lot of weird speculation for announcement that came out a couple hours ago. Right. But I would love to hear your thoughts on this because everyone's sharing their opinions and they're all kind of interesting, actually. So I do agree with those people that say Lorcana will not have Star Wars. And it could just very well be that uh, Final Fantasy or what it was, Flight? Fantasy, Fantasy Flight. Flight games that they just have the like grandfathered rights for physical TCG for Star Wars. And Dan Regal or James, he has this very great theory that after they talked, after Disney talked with Ravensburger on whoever said, let's do this, Disney went back to uh, FFG and just said, you got to keep doing stuff or we're going to yank it, yank your rights. And that theory makes sense to me, but obviously no one's going to know that but them. And then I'm not too excited for it. I'm definitely a more Disney animated fan than Star Wars, but more games in this industry i'm happy for anyone can find their perfect ip that they like and just play that game cool that is awesome i do like that take it's an interesting thought that maybe disney was sourcing out licenses because fantasy flight has prior to this had the the rights to card games so they've done a star wars living card game and then Mm -hmm. they did the star wars destiny game that had cards and dice it was a collectible amalgamation of those two products so it wasn't like a tcg or a ccd like a you know collectible dice game it was right its own kind of thing but Fantasy Flight has always had the licensing to Star Wars. For people who don't know about Fantasy Flight games, they also have the license for Marvel games in card form. So they have Marvel Champions, which actually is a really good cooperative LCG. But I don't think that Lorcana is going to see either Star Wars or Marvel due to the fact that, A, Star Wars Unlimited is a thing, so they don't need to compete or probably can't compete with the licensing issue. And then with FFG carrying the Marvel license for champions, I really don't know if anyone wants to or can make a trading card game other than Fantasy Flight. Right. So we'll have to wait and see. A big a big thing that's just really interesting, it makes it hard to speculate, is we're kind of in like the Lorcana seat a second time. Like we don't know anything about gameplay. <laughs> we haven't even seen a card. We don't know how it wins, how you lose, how anything functions. We just got a piece of art that looks really cool and an announcement saying, here it is. So that just isn't really enough to go off of, honestly. <laughs> right. So I'm excited to talk about this a little bit more on a, a future podcast with the Lorcana cast team. But for right now, hot takes, eh? I mean, okay, we'll wait and see like what happens, but I personally don't think this is necessarily going to hinder the Lorcana community or the game. I'm personally going to wait and see what happens, and then I'll probably, depending on if the game is good or bad or whatever, like I'll buy a starter. I might buy one booster box, and I mean, see if people are playing in the community, or I might just collect it for the fun of it, because they did announce there's alternate arts and different foilings and things, and like, that's cool. I'm interested. Yeah, that was that was one thing I thought was kind of really cool and very different compared to Ravensburger, was organized play was pretty much announced right away in some form or fashion and then alternate arts like they just straight up said that instead of how Ravensburger like showed six cards right away or seven cards and then just said okay we'll see you in in January for more cards (laughs) right I think the FFG team probably did the best announcement for any of the games they've ever done in mm. this press release because normally they would say hey you know here's a new game coming out it's going to be dynamic they, they use all these buzzwords it's fun it's dynamic it'll grow back your hair and give you you, you grow wings of fly and it's like <laughs> okay cool you know it's the same vernacular as every card game so what right. is the card game this one they obviously use a lot of buzzwords but like you said they came out of the gate running with there's organized play oh hey that's awesome also there's alternate arts oh and alternate foilings really okay we don't know anything about the game but we at least have a somewhat set of expectations that it's going to be collectible 
It's going to be playable. It's going to be, you know, this different kind of game that Fantasy Flight has never done before. Now, I I do know for people listening in their history, they did a Game of Thrones trading card game that actually was like, you know, booster packs and whatnot. But they've never done a massive IP such as Star Wars in a true traditional trading card game. Star Wars Destiny doesn't count because it was a a very niche kind of game because, you know, you have dice and cards and it's just a lot harder to collect, a lot harder to transport. So they've they've yet to actually do a, a giant IP like Disney or Star Wars in a collectible scene. I would like to add that this kind of goes with this theory or rumor that's going around with Disney as a whole on that Disney wants to be the IP that everyone knows. And right now, Pokemon does have that like number one media franchise spot. And with them, with Disney pushing more trading card game stuff, sure, they're not going to take 100% of Pokemon fans. But even if they take like 5% of fans with each of these games, they're going to start getting closer and closer to that number one media spot. That is a very interesting theory. I could see it. Well, we'll just have to wait and see what the game plan is (laughs) because... We know Disney's a little not not strapped for cash, but they're they're needing a little bit of more public love and support in their, you know, bank. Mm -hmm. So with everything going on in the parks and the movies and everything, seeing trading card games do well would be beneficial, especially with families and younger audiences. So I could see that it is interesting. And I'll, I'll say this and then, you know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. We'll move on. Interesting that both Lorcana and Star Wars Unlimited, both teams have said they've been working on this for like two-ish, three-ish years. Right. Which would mean that they've probably not talked. I would wager money. Neither of them knew about the other. But they both... That, yeah. They both kind of began their development around the same time. And so it's interesting to see Lorcana coming out first, Star Wars Unlimited coming out second. It's going to be really awkward if Star Wars Unlimited plays like Lorcana, where it's right. like, oh, you know, you, you like you know, quest, <laughs> you tap your, your character to gain force points, and then you can attack Ugh. other tapped characters. I'm like, wait a minute. I've seen <laughs> this before. Darn it, Keyforge, get, get out of here. <laughs> I was about to say they did have Keyforge originally <laughs> yeah i i loved keyforge so much but it's gonna be like that scooby-doo meme where they take the mask off and then you know it's star wars limited and it's like oh it's keyforge ah what are you doing here man it's like oh i'm just trying to come back y'all it's it's keyforge time so it does I it does know. make me wonder what was happening in disney two years ago two and a half years ago when this development for both of these games started I mean, clearly Disney knew the overarching grand scope, while Robinsberger and FFG probably didn't. I know the community of developers and designers is is tight knit, so mm-hmm. maybe they're you know they kind of knew something, but I don't think either team was like fully aware. Like, oh hey, you know you've got this right. Star Wars trading card game. Oh, we've got this Disney trading card game. What really? That's cool. <laughs> so again, I really want to see what it plays like because. FFG games are really good. They're really, it's a really interesting company. They make great games. They're just so far in the past, really bad at sustaining them. Mm -hmm. And that's why every single LCG, TCG, and then Destiny, the dice and trading card game thing are all dead, but everyone loves them. Like if you talk to the people from the community, they're like, they're like this game was amazing. It just died. Yep. It's like, well, the common denominator, folks, is the company that makes it, <laughs> not the game itself. But they have kind of owned that and they've been very upfront saying, hey, you know, we've had lots of experience with like, you know, Netrunner and then Legend of the Five Rings and Star Wars Destiny and, you know, Warhammer and stuff like that. And they're putting every everyone they can into a team to work on this project so it's like i'll give them a chance i'll absolutely be willing to give them a chance and see but i mean do you think for you someone who knows very little about ffg is that enough for you to give them a chance to say hey we we messed up but we're owning it and we're gonna try harder like does that give you a sense of security yes and no I say yes, because they are acknowledging their mistakes, but then they also kind of underplayed their mistakes in their announcement, saying that in the past we couldn't do it and now the industry can do it. But the industry has been doing doing it, has been doing it this whole time. Yeah. And so it's like you're saying yes and no to your mistakes. (laughs) It's really COVID's fault because no one else (laughs) could do it. But now we can. 
can do it. All right, looking at you, Magic Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon, Flesh and Blood. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. What were you saying, FFG? Okay, yeah. No, I, I think that's a fair point. I I want to see them do well. I really hate seeing, you know, announcements and people just schlep it off like, well, it's FFG. Screw those guys. It's like, right. well, I agree. We've we've been burned. I've been burned just like many other people. It is tricky. But I still want to see what they do because Star Wars games are fun. And I don't just want to write it off and say, no, nah, screw those guys. They they hurt me. It's like, OK, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see what happens. But we have a year again. I think. What do you think? Do you think we'll see anything at Gen Con? Maybe, possibly, probably. I think we'll see stuff at Gen Con for sure. OK, so that also is our hilariously secret transition and segue into talking about Lorcana at Gen Con. So you've seen the announcement. You're going to Gen Con, right? You're going to be there with us? Yes. Okay. So what did you think when the Sunday catalog went live and we saw, oh, there's a learn to play demos. That's awesome. Oh, there are like demo deck tournaments leading mm-hmm. to a super secret unknown Sunday event. Like what were your thoughts on that when you saw it? So I honestly completely forgot about the event catalog on Sunday. And then I I got the tweet notification from Gen Con and I was like, oh, yes, I have to do this. And I was looking at it was actually the tweet from Disney Lurkana and I was looking at the catalog and I saw demo demo. And then there is the the tournament, the challenge or whatever. And I was like, oh, this is what I wanted from them. And even though it's it's not an actual constructed like bring your own deck, but even if it's just a sealed starter deck with the one pack you can change, like that's exactly what I wanted from them. And I'm hoping to get that top eight to go to that secret one. But who knows? Were you surprised that there are events? Because there was so much speculation beforehand that there is an event, there isn't an event. We we thought there wasn't just because it's a small team. They seem pretty stretched already. We're pretty we were pretty confident there wasn't going to be any like competitive product, which right. realistically there's not because most people think, OK, in order to have an event, you got to have like booster boxes and starters and, and, you know, stuff to crack. And this is very, very clearly a casual competitive tournament, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I don't think no offense to anyone who wins or loses. I don't think we're going to walk away and be like that person is, you know, the best <laughs> player in the world because the, the the starter decks are randomized. You don't get to control that. You only get mm-hmm. one booster pack. And even if you get, you know, the nuts drawn, everything in that pack is in color. You know, your two colors of random, whatever. You only get 12 cards. And all of those probably aren't game warping. They're probably just copies of a card in the deck, plus maybe a rare, super rare, whatever. So we also don't know what the finals look like. A lot of people have been speculating it's multiplayer. And if that's the case, boy, it's going to be fun. But at the same point, like how you can't really, you know, say this is like a, you know, fully constructed hardcore tournament. Right. Like, so like. How do you feel about that? Because I don't mind the fact that this is probably going to be much more of a, hey, this is like my first tournament ever, and I just want to play and see what happens and have a good time. It's like, that sounds like a lot of fun compared to, you know, a lot of sweaty players trying to (laughs) <laughs> prove their worth and get a gen co- you, know, you know what i mean like sometimes you, you play competitive pokemon there's a lot of people who really try and use their their game skill in a trading card game to foster an identity that they are better than you it's like you're right. not you're just, you're just a human playing a card game like come on so yeah i was a little shocked but i was hoping that this was going to be a thing, at least some type of tournament. And I'm glad it's actually multiple tournaments so that people have a chance to do it instead of like the one tournament capped at 200 people or sold out, even though there's going to be what, like six, 60 times seven, however many people that is. Yeah, there's seven events and then 60 players per event. Right. But obviously people can go into two different events, which I probably will be doing just so I can try to get that top eight placement. But like you said, it is a casual competitive. I think it is perfect for their first like event. Even though this isn't an organized event, this definitely is going to show how they want to have organized events be handled. And I hope it goes smooth. Who knows if they're going to have their actual like companion app ready for it or they're just going to use their own like Chalon or something like that system. Yeah, I think that's a good take. It does feel like this is kind of a beta test and it'll be fun to participate in it Mm -hmm. and see how it works, what works, what doesn't work. I think as long as expectations are managed, if you're going to compete, you should at least have in the back of your mind the understanding that win or lose 
you know, it doesn't change who you are. Cause I know, I right. know for a fact, there's going to be people who are like, Oh, I, I only got, you know, this one deck. I could only get into two events and both of them. I just couldn't get the deck I wanted. And I, I just had bad matchups and, and this, this, this sucks. Okay. I, I hear you. Like that mm-hmm. is very p- probable. You know, you might not get the deck you want. You might get a bad matchup and, you know, because there's not much consistency, like starter decks are meant to be played for fun, not for tournaments. So they're right. not as consistent. The power level isn't as high. There's, there's a lot of things missing from a starter deck because the concept of a starter deck is you and little Timmy go to target and buy one and you play a bunch of games at the house and you have a lot of fun because it doesn't matter. And then maybe you open up your booster pack and add some cards and you play again and you're just having fun because it's fun. You're playing the game for the, the love of the game, not to prove you're better than anyone else or to get a top eight play mat or to become the Gen Con world champion. It's <laughs> I'm playing this starter deck with my buddy. Exactly. And I get that feeling from the, the event that you're just going to play starter decks with people. And if you make it to the top eight, you get a prize. If you don't, there's more events. There's probably going to be all kinds of others. I mean, there's there's open play. So the right. more I look at it, initially I was like, oh, competitive event. Oh, wait, no, this is not a competitive event. Oh, wait, this is just kind of playing cards with your friends. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Like, I can't really be super sweaty about it because it's not intended to be that. I'm, I'm going right. to have fun. Like, I, I kind of hope we get to play. If not, we'll play casually because, like, part of me wants to play my friends, not to beat them, but just have fun with them. The mm-hmm. other half, I don't want to knock friends out though. That's, <laughs> it's like, ugh, I don't, I don't want to are always that. the worst. I, in Pokemon, a friend and I traveled together the like six, six hours from uh, Southern California to San Francisco and round one, we were paired together. <laughs> paired together. Yeah. That's the worst. It's like, Hey man, I hate to do this to you. <laughs> But if they're, if he's the driver, if your buddy's the person taking you home, it's like, yeah, you you got this, bro. <laughs> I'll, I was, I'll take I the was actually here. the driver, and I did take the win. So I, it was, he knows it was good. they they know the rule. You let the driver win. Let the let the Wookiee win. Well, I'm excited. I'm glad you're coming. Whether we play in an event or not, we're definitely gonna play some games because this for sure this con is gonna be magical. I mean, I will say. I'm a little upset because I'm pretty sure there's going to be a Star Wars Unlimited panel. And now I'm going to sign up for it, which won't mean I'm probably not going to go to certain Lorcan events, depending on right. whatever it is. But I really do want to see what that card game is like. I, I'm very, very, very curious. I just want to Same know, here. does it does it suck? Does it not? <laughs> and that's it. That's literally all I want to know, because it'll come out and I'll buy it. But Lorcan is like my love right now. So right. Gen Con is going to be great. Anywho, tell the listeners where they can find you. They can listen to your podcast. Please plug everything and anything you would like to. Yes, you can find me personally at Cabled on pretty much all social media platforms. And then the podcast, you can find that at EN Lumineers, pretty much every social media platform. And the podcast is called The Enlightened Lumineers. So before we get on out of here, I'm going to query you about maybe some insider knowledge about your show. Do you have any plans for your next episode any topics you might divulge for our listeners to prepare themselves for my next topic is definitely going to be about organized play and then i do have i think 28 cards that i still need to go over or at least re-review so that'll be fun lots of stuff to talk about before gen con so that is the end of this really short hot take show thank you cabled for coming on we really appreciate your time and we will see everyone soon thank you for joining us and make sure to like and subscribe and we hope everyone has a wonderful day Just like you wheels, always getting the I'm so-